Hi everyone, Christine here. Welcome back to my channel where I'm sharing unique insights and strategies based on my experience as a data director and bootcamp founder to make you become a standout data analyst in today's really competitive job market. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the language that we use as data analysts on the real job. And no, I'm not talking about SQL and Python. I'm talking about the day to day vocabulary that we use while working on a data team with other analysts and non technical stakeholders. And this is going to be really important to bring into your interview and all throughout your job search to signal to hiring managers that you have confidence working with data. So let's dive in. So here's what we're going to cover today. I'm going to talk about why data analyst lingo is important. Then I'm going to give you some examples of technical phrases, business phrases, and analytical phrases, and how you would actually use them on the job and in interviews. And then I'm going to give you some tips for how you can leverage this lingo in your job hunt to really stand out. So you know that every industry and every line of work has its own kind of jargon. A really large part of being able to actually succeed on the job is being able to speak the language. And the more you can do this, the more you can also build confidence in your own abilities, because if you're going to be a data analyst, you might as well start thinking and speaking like one now. And the more you can do this, the more you also send the right signal to hiring managers. In every interview, there's always this intangible quality that someone is looking for in the background. And, you know, we call it something like culture fit or job fit, which really just means, does this person seem like they would actually succeed in this job on this specific team in this company? And using the right language sends the signal, I understand what you're looking for and I can deliver that. So we're going to talk about some technical phrases and that's the terminology that you would normally use when you're working with other data analysts or another data engineering team. And the first one is metric. So that's also called a measure or KPI, which stands for key performance indicator. And that's a quantitative value that can be measured and analyzed like sales revenue or number of customers. This is basically the backbone of every data analyst job where you're going to be working to report, measure, analyze, understand, and predict these metrics. So an example of how you might use this phrase on the job is it looks like for this analysis, our most important metrics are going to be bookings, active users, and number of sales. On the flip side of that, there's a concept of dimensions, and that's a qualitative characteristics that used to slice and dice data for analysis like time, location or product. And they basically give context to your metrics. So for every single table, there's always metrics and there's always going to be dimensions. And an example of how you would use dimension is for bookings and active users. We have dimensions like country, product and month of purchase available in the subscriptions table. Every table also has the concept of table grain, and that's the level of detail or granularity of a table. It basically answers the question, what is the unique level of this data set? It's similar to the primary key, but it's a little bit different because the table grain is the concept that captures what does each row in that table represent, whereas the primary key is actually a structural thing. It's an actual column in that table that you can point to that shows the unique identifier. So an example here is the grain of the sales table is daily transactions per store since each row shows the day, the store and the number of transactions for that store. This concept is a little bit tricky, I will say. So if you can actually drop this terminology in something like a live coding interview, that would earn you some points as an early career data analyst. Lastly is number formatting. So that's the way that numbers are displayed, including commas, decimals, and currency. And you might use it like this. So before we send this off for review, let's just make sure everything is rounded correctly and we show the right currency so that there aren't any number formatting issues. Of course, there is a lot more technical terminology here, especially when you're working with data engineering teams. And these are some of the phrases that you'll want to get more familiar with. There's more of a formal description and definition in the lingo guide in the description below. The first is data model. So this data model contains tables pertaining to subscriptions. Issues in the data pipeline cause delays in our reports today, story of my life. Let's ensure data integrity by making sure data isn't lost when we refresh the table. Data cleanliness is really important here. So let's remove duplicates and make sure we correct inaccuracies before analysis. And we put alerts on the table that generate executive reports to ensure data quality. And lastly, the data engineering team are going to be building the infrastructure for this new set of reporting. Now we're going to talk a bit about top business phrases. And these are phrases that you will probably use when working with non-technical people or non-technical stakeholders, like people working in sales or marketing or product or operations, or people who are a little bit tangential to data like finance and accounting. 
The first is North Star KPIs. So that's a bit of a spin on metrics where these are top metrics that capture company performance. So for a social media app, for example, the North Star KPI might be the number of people using the app every day. So you might say something like, since this analysis is for a SaaS business, subscription as a service, I'll assume the North Star KPIs are monthly bookings, subscriptions, and active users. Another is requirements gathering. And this is the phase in a data project where you figure out what stakeholders need in terms of what questions they want answered, the deliverables in terms of how those deliverables should actually be structured, and also timelines. So after getting a request from a stakeholder, I would just set a meeting with requirements gathering to clarify some questions about the analysis and the deliverables. The next is growth rates, which is a bit self-explanatory, but every company wants to understand how they're performing against a previous period. A lot of data analysts job will be in reporting what growth rates are so that you can help a company understand how they're performing compared to a previous time. And no, that does not stand for wow or mom. It stands for week over week, month over month and year over year. So you might say something like yearly growth rates for revenue have gone down the last year, especially in the US where they decreased by 20%. Another is seasonality, and that's just regular ups and downs observed in the data that happen at certain times of the year. And here an example is I wanted to understand whether there was any seasonality in sales. So I graphed sales by month and saw consistent spikes in summer and winter. A few others that I'll leave here forecast this month, we beat our subscribers forecast by 10% thanks to the new promotion we launched. Executive summary in the presentation, I'll include an exec summary so non-technical people can get a quick read on our insights and then key takeaways. So when presenting to stakeholders, I usually include a key takeaway slide so that people remember the most important insights. All right, we're going to dive into the last section here, which are top analytical phrases. And this is just terminology that you'll usually use when describing your analysis. The first one is exploratory analysis. When you examine your data to uncover trends, patterns and insights without testing specific hypotheses. So I did some exploratory analysis to identify unexpected patterns in customer behavior before starting a more formal analysis. The next is performance measurement. So tracking and assessing how a metric is performing against a set goal or benchmark, or if we want to use the one that we just discovered on the last slide against a forecast. So I built a dashboard in Tableau for performance measurement so that the sales team can see how revenue is tracking against forecast. So as I mentioned, metrics are going to be the backbone of a data analyst job. And a lot of the job is actually understanding why metrics fluctuate. So last week I saw some significant metric fluctuations in website traffic, probably due to the recent campaign launch. Hopefully it's a good fluctuation. Um, and then historical values, past data points that provide a record of how metrics have changed over time, which is usually useful for trend analysis or forecasting. So you might say something like, I don't actually think this is an outlier since it's in line with historical values when comparing to June 2022 and June 2021. Now let's talk a bit about how you can actually leverage lingo in the job hunt. And there's a few different ways. The first one is to make your project stand out. So in project write-ups and GitHub readme's use this data analyst lingo to represent how we actually talk about our projects at work. So for example, you might have a section where you actually define your metrics and dimensions and you talk about what the North Star KPIs are. And maybe you even have a header that says executive summary or key takeaways. And this signals to someone that the way that you've done your portfolio projects is very similar to how we've done our projects on the actual job. Then of course you want to build your confidence in interviews. So practice using these phrases as you're actually prepping for interview responses and also ask questions like an experienced data professional. So prepare standout questions for interviewers by using these phrases to flex your data literacy. So that's questions like what is the level of data integrity and data quality at the company? Or how does the data analytics team work with the data engineering team? Or maybe even what are the North Star KPIs for the specific departments that I would be working with? And then lastly, also sprinkle it into your resume so you can have a standout resume to improve ATS matching and also show recruiters your familiarity with the actual job. All right, next steps, download my full lingo guide below so that you can have this in front of you as you start practicing and implementing this in your projects and resume, and then practice these examples as you start preparing for interviews. Lastly, you should follow me on LinkedIn for some future free workshops that I'm going to be doing in person and online. All right, guys, that's all for today. I have been trying very hard to keep these videos more short and sweet. So if you found this video helpful in any way, don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights and also leave a comment below with any questions. I will make sure to respond to every single one. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video.